I could be in my cozy home right now enjoying a warm, home-cooked meal, but instead, I'm out here at the coast at sunset because there's a low tide. So I ate a protein bar, drank some hot chocolate because I want to bring you along on a nature journal adventure. If you came along for my other nighttime nature journaling in the tide pools trip, you know that there can be some awesome creatures here. And I wanted to share those on the nature journal show. Also, I didn't have any interviews planned for this week, so I had to make this nature journaling trip count. It was not easy because out here, once it starts getting dark, it is hard to get around, it is slippery, there were gale force winds this week, big waves, all kinds of slippery rocks with algae growing on them, uneven ground. So not only was this week's episode of the Nature Journal show at stake, but there was also the chance for real bodily harm and a freezing nose. My nose is dripping right now. You might be able to see the... So I'm going to start off my page with a landscape veto. I've already used my viewfinder to draw a frame on my page. And now I'm going to use my viewfinder to simplify the shape of the rocky shore. I'm going to make it just black and white and I'm using my Futayaku um, ink brush pen to really punch in those dark colors of the rocks. You can see the light is going away really quickly, so I'm using my little clamp on book lamp, which is super helpful. 15 minutes later and it has already gotten significantly colder and windier. The tide is already starting to come up, but we found some of our first cool creatures. I realized I forgot my headlamp again, and it, we found this fish and are gonna try to catch it so that we can get a closer look and I can nature journal it. But the water's a little bit deep here, so we have to figure out the best way to reach in and catch it or use my butterfly net to try to catch this fish and put it into a small terrarium to look at it more closely. Does it have the green eyes? The other one I looked at. It has like uh, uh, dark eyes with like a pale center. Wow, the white, it almost looks like a bird pooped on it. <laughs> Try to draw that. I like those long, uh, the like long dorsal. Yeah. Image. And then that one pale white spot on the back. Yeah. I don't think the one I found last time had um had the uh, white spots on this it. This one seems to have different markings than even that first little one that we saw. Like the head. All right. So been exploring with my friend here and uh, we found a really cool, we found some really cool stuff in this tide pool and we found a, a sculpin and a kelp crab so I'm gonna try to nature drill them right now somehow I managed to forget my headlamp again so all I have is a handheld lamp um, and my um, book light you can see I have my book light here clipped onto my nature journal super super helpful even though it's not that bright that's actually kind of good and then in here is this sculpin and it's really really cool so I'm gonna try to do a little bit of nature journaling of that sculpin so I'm gonna set my lamp here so it, it lights up the fish and um, use this to light up my paper because having two separate lights is really useful when you're nature journaling in the dark really windy today. It's a lot windier than the other time I tried to nature journal in the tide pools at night. These rocks are super awkward right now. Whoa. There goes my lamp. Oh no. Uh, my tripod's impossible to set up um, in these conditions. Can you even see? You're probably not even going to be able to see my drawing, but I'm going to go for it. Feel my finger is gonna 
bulldog paper clips were absolutely essential in this situation and I had to use two per page. The clip lamp, um, the book lamp works the same way. All right, so I don't think you can see me right now, but just nature journaling this sculpin. I think it's some type of sculpin and uh, just trying to capture the basic shapes of it. basic drawing that I have of the fish, the sculpin. Um, I should probably try to get like some type of measurement in. Um, this is bigger than actual size. So my guess at the actual the actual size would be oh maybe I should just use my my ruler. Everything everything is so much harder in the dark like drop something you wouldn't even know it you'd probably lose it so it's looking like I'm gonna use centimeters here it's looking like less than 10 centimeters long uh, I'd say it's about nine centimeters long way bigger than the sculpin that I saw last time wow the wind is blowing everything around so it's about 10 centimeters long. Uh, actually, I think it was it, okay, a little bit less than 10 centimeters. So it's more like nine centimeters. Um, really cool one. It has these very dramatic white spots. My paper is absorbing the moisture because there's quite a bit of moisture in the air here with the wind and with the rocks and the, the tide pools all around me. Um, dramatic white spots. This stripe in the middle, um, this white stripe in the middle reminds me of this um, breed of cattle that we have around here called belted Galloways. So that's really cool. I think I'm gonna try to nature journal it from a different perspective or... Um what? What happened? Didn't you hear about the Nature Journal show? Yeah, I heard about it. It's like the greatest show. I watch it every week on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. to create, to get all kinds of great nature journaling tips and inspiring interviews. Yeah, exactly. That's the show. But didn't you hear? Didn't I hear what? Didn't you hear that the Nature Journal show might go off the air? No, no way. Yeah, it's true, man. It's 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 possible. The show has been happening every single week for over a year and a half. A new episode every single week. Do you know how much time Marley spends making the show every week? No, I don't. Finding all the people for the interviews, doing the research, going out on Nature Journal adventures, and risking his life to get the footage, and editing all that editing work jeez it's a lot of time and guess how much money he's making but i bet he's making tons of money he's like a famous youtuber like the youtuber lifestyle man. driving a ferrari no way not even close currently the only money he gets for all the work he puts into the show is about 250 dollars a month from his patreon sponsors Patreon? Well, Patreon is a membership platform that allows people like you to support the artists and the creators and the educators that they like. On his site, you can support him for as little as $1 a month. And you also get access to sneak previews, behind the scenes videos, and Patreon parties. I probably have a dollar or five dollars a month that I could contribute for all the time and information that I get on the show? That's easy, I spend more money than that on Netflix. I wanna support him. Just type in this address right here or click on the link below in the description and you can go right there. Quite an interesting fish. Look at that thing. Okay, 
so now I put the light on top of the ter the little terrarium, and the lighting is really good. I don't know if the, the, the light is going to fall off in the wind or something, but I can see the fish's face so much better. So I'm going to try to draw it. I'm in a super uncomfortable position sitting on these rocks. My tripod is barely balanced, but uh, it's fine. It's so cool. I'm going to try to draw the face now because I, I should get it just... Oh, no! There goes the lamp. That's what I was worried about. We should probably come up with a system for um, creating a lamp that will stay on top there. Uh, the fish got... Oh, no, the fish is getting all freaked out. It's backing up. It's changing position. I'm going to have to release this fish pretty soon because I don't want to bother it too much. I can turn it here. Here we go. Here we go. Be patient, fish. I'm going to release you soon. Okay, this is not easy nature journaling right here. Okay. Try and get these different angles. You can see the front view there. I don't know if my lamp is gonna. You can see the wind is just blowing the terrarium around. It's so windy out here. Look at the front view. It's such a weird fish. Hard to draw, but so grateful that I could get a chance to look at this thing. I think the tide's coming up because I was just heard this like gurgling sound right next to me and and saw the water coming up. But um, yeah, there's some big, big waves out there. The moon is setting on the horizon right now. And now I'm gonna try to draw this um, kelp crab. So let's see if I can put the light here. Um, oh man, I need to come up with a system for keeping the light strapped on the top because that seems like such a good angle for the lighting. But let's see if I can do it this way um, and then have uh, my book lamp on here. There's a lot of moisture in the air. My paper is getting all weird. Uh, but let's see if I can draw this crab and uh, this kelp crab right now and get it on video. This is definitely some of the most awkward nature journaling I've ever done. Can't really see what I'm doing and I'm in very awkward positions. Okay, let me find my pen. Having your stuff, you're gonna note, you're gonna definitely learn a lot about your organizational system um, when you're trying to nature journal in these kind of situations. Okay, I should probably leave space for a title here somewhere because I, um, yeah, I need, I need space for a title here um, somewhere. And then I'm going to try to fit this kelp crab drawing in here underneath. Whoa, almost knocked it over. Okay, don't want to do that. Okay, so let's get this light down here. There we go. that crab is definitely moving around it looks like it has some kelp um, kelp attached to its head which would help with the camouflaging I know this is a kelp crab because I've ID'd these before it's moving a lot I don't know if it was moving before the light was put on it but it's moving a lot it's gonna be challenging I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to do this I'll just have to do quick sketches because it's moving so much. Oh, come on. It's moving a lot. Alright, that's what the claw looks like. Come on now, work with me here. Hmm. Does it move in association with an orientation to the light, I wonder? Okay, that angle it's at right now is definitely one of the harder ones to draw, so I'm going to wait. Uh, or maybe I'll try moving it. Here we go, here we go. Stay there. Stay there for a little bit, buddy. Okay. It's got the basic, um, basic sketch of it right now. Let's see if I can improve my angle here slightly. That way. All right, now, ooh, now the front of it. Ooh, the front of it. Okay front of it. Ooh, my journal's about to fall in the water. Okay. Wow, what is that pale color on the front of it? 
I don't know if I can draw the front of it. It's got tail stuff on the inside of the claws too. This, this one seems way more activated by the light than um, the fish was, which is kind of surprising to me. Um, kind of surprising. Okay, let me take some notes because I think I'm going to release this one soon. It just seems really not digging the light. Um, so I'm going to try to get some written notes here. Um, kelp growing on head. I can hear the water coming up again. Um, kelp growing on head, tail, tail, edge, two claws. Lots of tail on face. I should get an approximate size. Jeez, okay, the thousand. I'd say it's about um, four centimeters. Well, actually, I'm gonna do a measurement. I'm really bad at centimeters, so. legs is probably like six centimeters across. Yeah, super cool. Super, super cool. Can't believe I'm out here doing this. This is awesome. Yes, this is like my best nighttime tide pool nature journaling page ever. If you like this video, if you got any inspiration, education, or entertainment from it, um, definitely give it a thumbs up and comment something down below. If you're new, subscribe to the channel. Make sure you're getting notifications. And to really help me even more, check out my Patreon page. Sometimes I post videos there that no one else gets to see for my patrons. And um, you can support me even with a really small amount of money because I am doing this full time. I wanna keep making better, more exciting, more educational, and more entertaining videos for you. And right now, I'm not monetizing them in any way. So um, go ahead over to my Patreon, check it out, and you can support me um, with as little as $2 a month. Bye. Check out these other videos.